The champ is here. Dan with the monster hole. We have been uh, a little lax in that. Probably a month and a half has gone by. So we really have a lot of uh, comics to get to. Um, I feel like holding this thing. I should be like, everyone loves going for Nature Man the comic. Woo! Well, now I could do it as well. Because I'm holding the belt. Actually, with this belt, feels a little more like the Macho Man. Yeah! All right. So, let's put this down so we can pick up the indie comics that we have. Oh, boy. This is crazy. All right, here we are. Indies, yikes. We're going to really have to move to get through these. Uh, the last video. We're doing this from the phone. So instead of the uh, camera that's at bad location, um, doing it on the phone allows me to uh, post it directly into uh, YouTube, but it takes a little uh, bit more processing um, than it does directly from the uh, home camera, but I mean... This environment, I get to uh, have everything around that I need. I get to show some stuff off that people like to see. A couple things going up on eBay, actually. So, uh, anyone interested in stuff could uh, contact me. I got everything uh, going up on eBay for lower than anyone else is asking. Um, you know, it's just like stuff that's accumulated. I'm trying to figure out if I should get rid of these. These are like Marvel Legends came out. Kind of like bigger than the regular Marvel Legends. You know. So you the Thor. If you see like this is like a regular DC Direct Marvel Legends. This is this size. So just so much stuff that's uh, accumulated. And I have been trying to pare down, so I've been doing all that. Um, but getting into the indie books, I did have a release myself, Argo 5, number 41. I want to do another Macho Man with this one. Too hot to handle, too cold to hold, yeah! Um, Argo 5, 41. See the plethora of guest stars that we have in this one. Okay, people who've been following the story know that Argo 5 is down a couple members, so they do a membership drive. Okay, and the membership drive is a combination of people who backed on Kickstarter uh, as well as some past indie uh, superstars that. I was friends with the creators, contacted them about uh, taking part in the story. But uh, yeah, within this, you can see that each guest star had a, a uh, illustration, full page pinup with a uh, copyright notice of who they are copyrighted to. Um, yeah, Michael Joshone's. Commando, Dave Brinks, Love Child. So, I'll give you a little looky inside. Okay, that was a page showing all the, uh, or many of the guest stars. Okay, Leo Gondam had, uh, did done the art on this one. Victor Ranieri had done the colors. Francisco Zamora had done the letters. I had uh, written it. Um, let's see. We even had a panel here. I should post this up on social media. See who can guess some of these uh, unnamed cameos. Okay, this is the panel right there. Okay, you can leave your 
guesses in the comments if you want. You can freeze that. Leave your guesses in the comments as to what past indie characters uh, I was alluding to. Um, all right. But, oh, you can get that at Indie Planet. A lot of these books are at Indie Planet. The next book is actually a book I get through Patreon. And that is Yeet. I think I was a couple issues behind on this. I'm not sure which issue I left off with. But I don't believe I had shown 42. It's covered by William Messner's Loeb. I might have actually. 42 and 43. Because um, I had just gotten 44. As always, it's a uh, flip cover the Rogettes we had a team of female heroes that was on one flip cover Storm Owl which is an ongoing story in there is the second flip cover um, just pop open 42 real quick because I know I was trying to keep up with the eats on this you know what I did hit now I remember 42 and 43 on the last one. So I am caught up. And we have 44. As I said, Storm Owl. Okay. Jason Mink writing. Eric Lona Salazar doing the art. And it's a uh, good solid superhero tale. Yeet sometimes does color, sometimes does black and white. Just trying to look for maybe a good example of the art to show you. And we're trying to find a maybe a dynamic storm owl. Well, the cover that I showed is the same art as the interior. Okay, it's been an enjoyable tale, Storm Owl. I haven't read this issue yet, so this is hot. Out of the mailbox. Uh, let's see. And the flip side of it, as I said, the row gets. Okay. I think there's a panel there with the with the team explaining who they are. Okay, there's the panel with the team. It's made by Well Merink and Shipley. That's the team that brought you this story. And I think uh, this character, Magma, Empress of Magma Lore. Okay, so she seems to be their opponent. There's a color illustration of her in the inside front cover and I believe just from the look of it she's the villain but who knows maybe she becomes part of the team the Rogettes we'll see in the next issue issue 45 of uh, Yeet comics again I go on patreon for that one you look up Yeet and you'll find it okay Kickstarter I had backed uh, G-Man comics um, and that had gotten me four books, Simon and Kirby, Agent, Simon and Kirby, Agent, number three, G-Man three and one, number one, G-Man United, number one, and the Handbook of the G-Man Universe. Okay, so those were the three books I ended up with from that. There were cover choices. Stephen Butler did this cover. Big fan of his work. Um, officially art. Lou Mogan writing it. Eric Bennett doing the colors. 
Lou Mogan doing the letters. Jim Burroughs, production editor. So, a little bit of the inside. Hey, officially, a very good, very good artist. See his work in the indie community. Uh, this one, Gilbert Monfanto, had Joe his cover. Okay. And he had done the interior as well. Huh? Yeah. So his art and colors. I think he did many of the illustrations in the handbook also. And he did this cover here, which is a homage to, I think it was Punisher and Spider-Man. Um, and he has a very cool setup. Who did the interiors on this? Let's see. Oh, Alan Farrier, who did a couple issues of Argo 5. So that's why I'm liking that art so much. Rick Offenberger doing the writing. Alan Farrier, the artist. Eric Bennett doing the letters. Lou Mogan, script editor. Jim Burroughs, production editor. So, uh, yeah, Alan, again, always a uh, great work the artist so that means he did the colors also because he's a talented colorist and again showed you that interior work and as I said I think Gilbert did most of the interior pinups in the handbook and all good stuff uh, talking about good stuff the horse fans number 17 okay I've been with this since number one now we're up to 17 a great output uh, Stuart Black doing everything, writing letters, colors, so he's doing the whole shebang. Uh, and he's uh, doing it on a Wacom, apparently. Wacom. Wacom? Um, but always love his style. Let's see. Cool, cool art. Actually, I had submitted a pinup, so let's go to the back page. Nope, there's an ad on the inside back cover. It used to be like a, a pinup. I have to contact him and see if that's going to be used. If not, maybe I'll share it with everybody. Um, That's on a different page. Uh, but yeah, it's always an entertaining story. The art is great. The writing is great. Great humor. Colors. Everything. Top to bottom. Highest recommendation. I guess you can't see the title that well. The Horse Femmes. From Furious Monkey Fest. All right. Okay, another thing I backed on Kickstarter, which now they had a regular release of Nefarious Smith's number five. Okay, with Doug, D-U-G, is the writer. Uh, Gilbert Farrell, art. Victor Hugo, is Acuerdo, did some art. Color, Edgar Tavis, or not, Tavitis. Letters, Alf, colon. Edited by Shelby Dixon, okay? There's ABC, no, AB312C Entertainment. They're the people bringing this. And, uh, yeah, I mean, people follow my books. Now I have some feline characters myself with Pink Puma and Red Rooster and uh, Leopard Lass and uh, Sorority of Power. El Tigre Roja has appeared in Argo 5. So they have their own character there. Okay, she was in one issue. I'm trying to recall the name. I know she was in an issue that I had bought on Kickstarter. Uh, the Feline, okay. So, uh, yeah, Doug gets some good artists. Always working on his stuff. Like... Umberto Ramos style. 
on that arc. Really cool stuff. Yeah, even the second artist, because I know you split it up. Sort of like the first artist a little more, but second artist kind of in that vein as well. Um, Silverline, okay, I've been always following them. Team Beetle, okay. Team Beetle number one, writer John Crowther, colorist Jerry Lou Smith, artist Del Barris, Del Barris, kind of well known, letter Hector Negretti, okay. So, Team Beetle, I think we're going more towards the public domain Beetle. Um, because before DC had Blue Beetle, there was a Blue Beetle. It's a complicated matter, but there's a public domain Beetle. Um, so I think this is a little homage to that. Um, yeah, just overall solid work all throughout. So line been around for quite a while. Uh, The Roland Man, actually, the driving force behind that, and he's the uh, editor in chief of this one, uh, this line of comics. All right. Temporal Comics is doing a handbook of public domain characters, talking about public domain characters. Okay, Temporal Comics, Heroes of the Golden Age, and it's as I said, a There's Black Fury, a popular character within Yeet that I mentioned. So they might be interested in checking out this issue. Five, Golden Age. Here's his Golden Age. Um, again, it's a handbook. Chris Malgrain does a good amount of the art in this. So that's a great segue into Chris Malgrain's Honoric Comics. Okay. Um... Which, uh, he's been doing his own work, but then he's also been reprinting a lot of public domain work. Um, so that's what this fantastic fantasy, I guess, uh, series is about. I guess he's remastered it, so I believe these are... All new colors in here. Uh, the middle story looks pretty cool. Lady Fairplay. Uh, what is the initial one? Mercury Man. Okay, and Chris does do a uh, original new cover for each of these. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, I believe this is new material, and this Frank Forst Presents Heroes of the Multiverse. Okay, I think this is actually a character from the Formidables in the back. So maybe there's a solo story of him in here. Frank Forst Presents, so maybe a friend of his, uh, or no, maybe Frank Forst is that character. Um, yeah. So they talk about heroes from the multiverse of the Valiant Four. Oh, that's what's on the cover also. So come up with different stories. Another honoric comic, Visions of the Space Age. And this might be, yes, more reprinted material, but this time in black and white. Uh, these are from Indie Planet, so along with my Argo 5 and all the Thunder Zone material and Argo Comics material, you can get a lot of this at uh, Indie Planet, Indie with a I-N-D-Y, Planet.com. Sentinels, two issues of that, 
by Standard Comics. Number 270. 271. Now, uh, I think this is issue 5 and 6. Um, because what they're doing is they're trying to make it like, you know, back in the day in the uh, Silver Age, uh, books made it up to 270 or 300 or whatever. Um, so uh, it's only now that comics continually start over with the number one. But it used to be like showing you a track record to hit 100 or hit 125, um, even to hit 50. Um, so nowadays... Everyone starts over with number one. I guess they want to... It's kind of doing a little throwback thing with the... Um, that price tag also, as if... See if I can yeah, close that up. Get a little, like, as if someone put a price tag in a, in a drugstore. So they have a little retro feel to the heroes. They combine their original characters with public domain characters. So it's Seems to be hitting a lot of public domain in the last few books that we're covering here. Roy Johnson, driving force behind uh, Standard Comics. And it looks like we got Fish Lee doing the art and letters in this. Both of these, okay? Show a little interior. Fish Lee, again, we just mentioned it before. We've uh, very good artist. That's from 270. That's from 270. Let's get a good 271. You can see kind of like a cool old style Justice League uh, roll call type thing going there. The big splash page. So great stuff from Standard Comics. Um, Minio Entertainment. Okay, so that's referencing Will Minio of, uh, well, animation fame. I'm most uh, nostalgic for his DM Agents series. Um, so Will Minio, talented artist throughout the years. And I guess he came up with his own Adventures of Cat. Passmore, subhuman. Okay, we talked about the character before the feline, so this she may have some feline thing going on as well with the name Cat, but maybe not. Cat Grant doesn't. So uh, yeah, but Will, always a talented artist, very versatile. So it seems like he's doing a little bit of a fantasy style in this book, okay? So, again, it's another Indie Planet release from Minio uh, Entertainment. So, worth checking out, as is Dead End Club. Okay, number six. Dead End Club, uh, created by pro wrestler uh, Chikal. Okay, he's the uh, driving force behind this book. And yeah, he's a, he's a team of kind of like, not superheroes, but like A team type of characters uh, that get together and go on missions. Um, I really enjoyed the series all throughout. Um, there's, like I said, with the uh, characters, their boss is that short woman, and I've often said that a lot of comics will have just like every woman 5'8", every guy is 6'2", so it's good to see some variations in there. Um, so... I get a kick out of that. Um, 
But yeah, the overall pre-production value. So, oh, created, written, and illustrated by David Chakal St. Martin, okay? So now you know he's doing the whole deal. Okay, and up to number six. And I have them all. So let that be your recommendation. Um, yeah, Chakal Art. That's the name of the company. company. Okay, Big Bang Comics, been around for quite a while. They've been utilizing um, an artist I've worked with as well, Ron Williams. Okay, so they did this Anomalies book. Okay, so Ron, super talented artist. Random page here, show his artwork off. Ron has great, 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 great work. Again, there's another Thunderzone book that will come out with his work. Um, trying to get that on the schedule. Um, and then, in actuality, uh, in Antarctic Press, we've been running the uh, Big House Blue story, and uh, Ron picked up. The second half of that series. So when we reach that point in the Antarctic Press title, Exciting Comics, which has been featuring my Nature Man work, uh, Sumo Boy work, and Weirdo was in there as well, all starting on issue nine. Um, so if you're looking in previews or whatever and you get to Exciting Comics, uh, from Antarctic Press that for the foreseeable future has my work in it. Um, they've been rotating different stories in there of mine, but some of my uh, work has been from issue 9 to what they've showed me in issue 18, uh, which isn't out yet, but this is just, uh, you know, a uh, preview that they sent me um, digitally. So, again, exciting comics. You'll be getting some of my uh, work, including uh, beyond what I did on Kickstarter with Nature Man and Big House Blues. So yeah, the story continues in that. Um, okay, this book, I had the first uh, iteration of it, and then they relaunched it with a new number one. I bought that, and I'm back for number two. Okay, Junction City Comics, I think it is. Yep, Junction City Comics, the all-new Union. Okay, and again, they redid it up, a little more animated style than what they had before. Quality was there, so I went back for issue two. Okay. <laughs> Took it in a different direction. I'm liking what I'm seeing, though. Um, so I picked that up. Junction City Comics, that was on Indie Planet, All New Union. Okay, they're doing it in black and white. Um, yeah, I can't really say for sure. It's like a Disney, maybe, Disney style art. From a Disney animated movie almost. But really, really nice. Really good quality work. Um, didn't really hit the creative team on that. Writer Tom Pescatore, Art Chiara Icobelli. Okay. Zeon Studios, Watch Guard. I don't know if I'm going to get through all these books. I mean, we're not anywhere near. Okay. Most of these have been Indie Planet, a couple Kickstarter. I might just have to make a separate Indie Planet one. Um, then go on to uh, go on to the other books in a separate video. Okay, Watch Guard. Created and written by Charles McKelvey. Penciled and inked by Andy Smith, whose work I love. 
uh, colored by Elmer Santos, lettered by Steve Dutro, edited by Ellen Fleischer, okay, produced by Jim Williams. Um, Andy Smith, phenomenal artist. I have a bunch of his how to draw books that he put throughout the years. Um, He's just a top rate artist, kind of in the vein of Bart Sears a bit, uh, but Andy Smith, amazing, amazing work. I had a Shazrat pinup and an Argo 5 issue from him that I had gotten out of convention. Um, so he's a recommended artist, and this watch guard becomes a recommended book. Uh, let's see. Got some more Indie Planet ones. One more Kickstarter, so maybe I'll go right up to that. High Treason League. Written and created by Webb Lanet. Out by Vaughn Mason. Okay, Webb actually had a character in Argo 5, number 41. Webb's character is Astro Knight. Okay, so we put, Webb had done a little uh, writing in the Argo Comics anthology. I know, Argo Comics Double Shot. He had a story in that. Um, and again, I looked at the previews of this. It looked pretty good. Again, another manga-inspired art style. Uh, let's try to look if there's a company on this. I do not see a company, but uh, yeah, just looks like good stuff overall. Again, a little manga-inspired, nice colors and letters. And uh, I picked that one up. Starcross Comics, Tribulation Task Force Parables, okay, Tribulation Task Force, Bill Raup, who I'm uh, friends with, and he put out this, uh, I guess it's further, like maybe spotlight stories on some of the different people within the um, Tribulation Task Force. Artist, we had a, a ref, let's see, Thief in the Night story. Bill wrote that one. Artist, Ruli Akbar, Luis Rivera, and Bunks art. So three artists for that. And then Silent Nights with another story in here. Oh, uh, let's see, Olin Orgig and Federico Theok to the cover. Writer Joe Spicer, art Brian Dawson. Colors in here are Perea Palai, who's been doing the Argo 5 colors uh, for quite some time. And letters Alex Schirkenbach. Okay, so overall, looks good. He has a cool double page spread of a bunch of heroes. Always love to see that as a fan of indie heroes. So that's Starcross Comics. Tribulation Task Force Parables. Uh, this was from Indie Plan as well. Legacy Comics. Oh, we had a Legacy Comic before. So we got another one. Omega Girl. Um, the Adventures of Omega Girl. Let's see. Writer Logan Shell. Art Brian Brindley. That's why I put, picked this up. Brian Brindley had done some work in the Argo Comics Anthology. He had done a Paladins story in that um, way back. So it's good to catch up with him on this and see what he's been up to. Colors, Febri, Ferdian. Letters, Y. Kim. Uh, graphics, Taylor Gibson. Um... Brian always liked his work, which is why we worked together in that 
Argo Comics Anthology. A little art of his. Colors look good in this book as well. Nice dynamic punch there. Uh, so Legacy put out that Hero Guard. And now we have this. Okay, yeah, Brian's doing some good work there. Okay, haven't read it, but it all looks good. All right, let's finish this off with another Kickstarter book. Still in the plastic bag. Uh, Crescent City Monsters I backed. Okay, I believe it's a black and white or a gray tone book. But the quality looked very cool. I'm not even sure who to compare this guy to. Let me just open up another page here. Um... Philharmonic, maybe? Uh, I just, yeah, I, I don't always have to compare everyone, but I, I try to give you a, an idea of who to, uh, if you're a fan of this, maybe you'll be a fan of that type of thing. Um, a little Dale Keown could be an influence. I came with this Dream Fury. Bonus book, okay. Dream Fury Comics is the people who put this out. And uh, again, it was a Kickstarter, so you had a lot of, you know, pitch over there to get an idea of what it would be like. Um, and the quality looked good enough that I want to go in on it. Um, So yeah, Crescent City Monsters. Uh, this is a Day Black Crescent City Monsters crossover. It says. I don't know if it's supposed to just be news. Let's see. I could open this up. We'll take a look in it just so you know. I mean, it's too late to back this at this point anyway. But just for anyone who's curious, let's see. This might just be like previews of what's coming. Yeah, it does kind of look like that. I mean, you got some pages of one thing, and you got pages of what seems like Crescent City Monsters. So this could have been even a promotional item, Crescent City Monster Art Book. So this could have been a promotional item they had at cons. Um, see, it's kind of like an article here. So maybe they put together their own little promotional book. Uh, to let you know what's coming. Um, all right, so let's end it at that, and we'll pick it up sooner than later as far as the next Indie Hall to get through more, because again, sending these into the uh, YouTube seems like the processing is taking longer these days. Um, uh, oh, well, Argo Comics, we got an issue of Sorority Power coming, Thunder Zone, we're finalizing the files uh, for the uh, last books in the uh, Kickstarter of uh, Junkyard Joe and Subject Alpha. Um, so I'll be doing the surveys of that so we can get a, you know, a, a lock on everyone's uh, address and uh, mail those directly from the printer to you to save some time. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for this monster haul. Um, please like uh, the video, subscribe to the channel uh, to keep seeing what I'm picking up 
and what Argo Comics and Thunderzone have uh, coming out. Um, and leave those guesses in the message below, uh, in the comments below, if you think you know who those uh, guest stars were. Maybe again, I'll post that somewhere on social media. Um, maybe even make a little contest out of it. Who knows? All right. Thanks a lot for tuning in. See you next time.